morning and welcome to our worship here at Crown Court Church of Scotland in Covent Garden, London. Before we begin the service, here is the second reading of an edict concerning the application of the Ministers and Deacons in Civil Partnerships and Same-Sex Marriages Act, Act 1 of 2015, to the current vacancy at Crown Court. This edict has been displayed on the church notice boards and the website for the last ten days and was read for the first time at last Sunday's service. Copies have also been sent to all church members. This is an intimation that a meeting of the Kirk Session of Crown Court Church of Scotland, London, is to be held online via Zoom on Thursday the 25th day of February 2021 at 6.45pm. In recognition of the diversity of views within the Church about the historic and current doctrine and practice of the Church in relation to human sexuality, and in the interests of the peace and unity of the Church, Departure from the practice of the Church in relation to human sexuality is permitted in certain, certain circumstances. The purpose of the Kirk Session meeting just intimated will be for the Kirk Session to decide whether to depart from the Church's practice in relation to human sexuality in order for applications for the current vacancy to be considered from, amongst others, individuals who are in a civil partnership or a same-sex marriage. In terms of the process for a decision to depart, contained in the Ministers and Deacons in Civil Partnerships and Same-Sex Marriages Act, Act 1 of 2015, this will be a second meeting of the Kirk Session on this matter. The vote at the second meeting will decide whether or not the decision is made to depart. Any vote on this matter must achieve a majority of those present and entitled to vote in order to take effect. And that was signed by the Reverend John McMahon, the Interim Moderator at Crown Court Church of Scotland, London, on the 9th day of February 2021.
As we enter these Lenten days and look to fall into step behind Jesus, entering with him the wilderness where battles are lost and won, faith tested and futures found, we confess we are not ready, we are not strong to face and to find all that might be revealed. We are not pure in mind and heart, our feet may stumble and be unsure. We carry too many burdens of guilt long gathered, Wounds often cherished, a past mulled over, wrongs not righted. And pray for you to meet us at the edge of the desert and lighten our load. Take the heavy packs off our backs and simply forgive what has been, what has not been achieved, all the good we failed to do. That we may travel lightly with you, our eyes set on the Galilean going ahead of us, clearing a path promising that for us rain will fall in the desert after the storm a rainbow will light the heavens and we will be made new through Christ our Lord. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 to 17. Listen now for the word of God. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, 
I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Amen. This morning's second reading is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. Amen.
The third reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 to 22. Listen now for the word of God. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. Amen. This morning's New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. The Baptism and Testing of Jesus At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. Amen.
Pied Beauty by Gerald Manley Hopkins Glory be to God for dappled things, For skies of couple colour as a brinded cow, For rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim, Fresh fire-cold chestnut falls, finches' wings, Landscape plotted and pieced, fold, fallow and plough, And all trades, their gear and tackle and trim, all things counter, original, spare, strange. Whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how, With swift, slow, sweet, sour, a dazzle, dim, He fathers forth whose beauty is past change. Praise him. <laughs> God, creator of every landscape, who shapes on the earth gardens lush and green, who hollows out of rock the desert scrubland, who sets the seas in their mighty depths, who sends the ice to carve out mountains, you we worship, for mystery and wonder have captured the eyes of our souls. God, creator of life above and below, who sends rain to water the field, who place sun and moon in their heights to lighten the world, who cast from the earth creatures that breathe the air, who in the sea birthed myriad forms of life. You we worship, for our senses are stirred to see and touch the works of your hand. God, creator of love and relationship, who lights the cloud with the rainbow's arc, who promises after the rain a day washed new, who promised the great of our faith the presence of God, who is near to us now to speak in cloud and sunshine. You we worship, for still you reach out in loving friendship. God, creator of all that is, who promised seed time and harvest, who wishes to shower us with good gifts, who walks with us the harsh stony roads, who rejoices with us in times of gladness, you we worship for the promise fulfilled that God is love and loves us all.
selected a poem by uh, William Wordsworth, not only because it was a firm favourite of my late father, but because as we come out of lockdown, we look for a ray of sunshine in these uh, trying times, which I feel this achieves. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. Then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Where angels fear to tread, comes Christ to walk. Feet firmly planted in the earth, that whatever lies beneath, there may be found a way through and a route onwards to life, shaped not just by earth, but by the heavens above. We pray you walk by the rivers, those that overflow and those that run dry. Where the course of life has taken strange turns and the landscape shifted out of recognition. Where the ancient roots are turned to silt and there is little left to refresh us. We pray you walk in the wilderness where makeshift homes are uprooted by powers that act without justice. That those who scratch a living might discover wells of water. Wherever the stones hurt our feet, wash the dirt clean from under us. We pray you walk in the city amidst all the wealth that hides the poverty, reshaping the history that builds us up and yet breaks us down. Anonymous, untouched, many wonder longing to connect in human touch. We pray you walk tireless and strong to all that awaits you. For unless you go, we cannot walk. And as you walk, remember us that we be bound in love to you and all mankind.
the Gaelic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.